let's, let's jump in here. Um, so, man, you got to think back um, a million weeks. We've kind of, we started in a series called uh, Origin Story. You guys remember that, Origin Story? Uh, and so we've kind of been talking some, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, some, some superheroes. Uh, and we've been kind of talking about what it means to be on mission with God, to be on God's mission. Um, God is on this mission to, to save the world. And he invites us to join in that mission, to, to be on a life-saving mission. And, and, uh, and, and what that looks like is that there are, there's brokenness and there's hurt and there's pain in the world. And so we get to play a part in, uh, in, in bringing about wholeness and healing and redemption. That's, what, that's what, part of what it means to be on mission with God. And so we, we've talked about um, uh, uh, being on mission. We, we talked about that starts with... Uh, knowing who we are, right? Knowing who we are and what our identity is. And if you remember, like, I don't even know how many weeks ago, we talked about um, in order to be on mission with God, we first have to understand that God created us to be what? In his image. To be in his image. Which means that if God is a God who redeems and brings about wholeness, and is on a mission to save the world, then we also are on a mission to do that because we are created in his image. And so we're on this kind of uh, mission, on God's mission, to, to save the world, right? We have a role to play. Um, I want to bring this, the, the origin story series to a close uh, tonight. And, and, and what I want to talk about is kind of um, that it, in order to be on this mission, this world-saving mission that God has called us to, we can be most successful in that when we do it as a team. All right, so here's what I want you to, I want you to think about. What are some of the superhero teams that you can think of? Just teams of superheroes. Batman and Robin. Okay, super. So you got that duo there. Teammates. What would you say, Braylon? The Justice League. So who's, on, who's in the Justice League? Who's in, just shout it out. Who's in the Justice League? Superman. Flash, Superman. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All those are in the Justice League. Okay. Super. What else? What is it? Teen Titans. Okay. Who's in the Teen Titans? Uh, yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what you're saying. Yeah. That's who's in there. Who else? Any other? Avengers. Okay. So who's in the Avengers? Okay, okay. I'm just taking your word on all of these because I truly don't know. Uh, okay, the Fantastic Four, okay. Okay, super. All right, so listen, there are, uh, there's, these, there's, there's these teams of superheroes, right? And superheroes can do some things on their own, and they can be somewhat successful on their own. But what we see is that when they come together, and they're a team, and they're all working together, then... Uh, much greater things can be accomplished, right? The much bigger missions can be accomplished. Tonight I want to talk about when we are on mission for, for God, when we are seeking to bring about justice and redemption and healing in our world, we can accomplish greater things when we are on a team together, doing this alongside one another, as opposed to just being individuals doing this mission on our own. So let's, let's look at Jesus' team. Who was Jesus' team that he had? The disciples, right? So, so he had the disciples, um, which there were 12 of them, right? So he had his 12 close disciples and his 12 close buddies. But truthfully, he had a lot more disciples or followers than just those 12, right? He had other crowds, other bigger groups that were following him, that was kind of doing his work with him, that were kind of on his team and helping him. And what I want to do is I just kind of want to think of Jesus' team, his 12 disciples, but also his bigger team, his, his team of bigger, bigger group of disciples. And we'll look at them, and I want to point out a couple things um, that we can see from them. And I want to kind of wrap that up and bring it home to, to figure out, well, okay, what, what about us? What's our team? How does this work? What does this look like? So the first thing I want you to see is this. Jesus's team was a diverse group of teammates. 
right? His group of followers, those who were on his team, it was a very diverse group. Listen to this. This is Luke chapter, uh, Luke chapter 8, verse 1 through 3. And this is just a, a couple of verses that, that kind of paint a picture of those who were following Jesus. Um, hold on. Oh, I'm in Mark. That's why, that's why it didn't look right. Luke, <laughs> Luke chapter 8. Here we go. Listen to this and listen to the, the wide, the, the diverse nature of Jesus' team. After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, which is an awesome name, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. So just a real quick picture of the people that were following and helping out in Jesus' ministry. They specifically talk about the twelve. Think about the twelve. Who was in the twelve? Who was in the group of twelve? Just throw some names out. Matthew. Matthew. Judas. Mark. Peter. John. Okay, there's all these people, right? If you, if you look at the 12 people that were closest followers of Jesus, it is a very diverse group, right? There's, a, there's groups of fishermen. There's groups of tax, there's a tax collector. There's, there's di- people with different kind of cultural and, and maybe religious uh, sects where they, they just, they, not everybody was the same. It was a diverse group of people that came together to join in the team and the mission of of Jesus. But in this in these three verses it talks that there weren't just the 12, there were several other people that were following as well that were supporting Jesus's team and Jesus's mission. Specifically, these women that were specifically mentioned in Luke chapter 8. So don't miss this, there's there's different <clears throat> groups of guys, there's a, a group of guys that are very diverse. But Jesus's team uh, mission team is also uh, including these women, which in this time for, for them to be kind of a part of Jesus' followers would have not necessarily been uh, on the up and up. But we see that Jesus had a diverse group of people who were, who were with him, who were behind him, who were on mission with him, uh, kind of working to do the mission that he had before him, to go about and save the world. So it was a diverse group. Here's the other thing I want you to see about this. Let me read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and I want you to listen to this. Now, this is actually, uh, this is actually Paul writing and, and talking about this group. But this, so this is kind of uh, next generation after Jesus. But again, this is the, the, the team that Jesus had set up to kind of go out and start the churches. And, and, they're, and they're following Jesus, they're on, on Jesus' mission. But I want you to hear what, what Paul says here. And this is actually kind of... Uh, when I was reading this and, and kind of thinking through this, I'm like, man, this is actually a little bit, seems a little bit harsh. But listen to this. Paul says, brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Like what you were when you were called to be on mission, on, on God's mission. Think of what you were. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the, lo- the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. So Jesus' team, Jesus' team on mission is diverse, but they're also very ordinary. Paul says, like, there, you, there was nothing special about you, like, which is, again, seems a little bit harsh, but Paul's saying there's nothing, there's nothing spectacular about who you were. Think of who you were before you're called. No, no, you weren't well-educated. You weren't, you weren't like, wise and, and just on top of the world. You were essentially nobodies. Not that Paul's being a jerk here, but he's reminding them that you're just ordinary people when you were called to be on Jesus' team and Jesus' mission. So they're ordinary we also see that Jesus' team were, was a group of people who were on mission. They had a very specific mission, and they accomplished a lot of things. Um, as Jesus was, was leaving uh, earth, he was ascending into heaven, he, he gave his followers these, these instructions. Uh, he gave them their, kind of their final mission, to go and make disciples of all nations and baptize them. Right? So he gives this final mission, but even before that, they are on mission 
with, with Jesus and they go about and they start doing the works that Jesus had shown them and, and they're on mission. Uh, and then Jesus goes away and, and again gives them that final mission and we see that they then go out and they do things. They continue the works of Jesus. They stayed on mission. They continue those works. That eventually spread into This is crazy to think about, but because of them being on mission, Jesus' team being on mission, we are who we are today, right? You can trace the lineage of of churches from Jesus' followers going out and being on mission to who we are today because they were on mission. So his group, his team was a diverse team. They were an ordinary team and they were on mission together. But there's one final thing that I want you to see here of of Jesus' team that I think brings a very human element to them. And that's this. Jesus' team, they struggled to get along at times. What we see is when Jesus' team uh, starts to to expand, especially after Jesus has ascended into heaven and they are on their own and things start to get bigger in the church, spreads and more and more people are added to their team, what we see is that there becomes these, uh, these problems that, that arise that, uh, that, that ends in conflict. Like there's struggles to get along and there's kind of a lack of peace and a lack of harmony. There's disagreements about cultural standards and how things should be done as more people are added. There's a struggle to get along at times. And so it's in that mind that the writer of Hebrews, uh, in Hebrews chapter 12, uh, let me just read that for you really quick. There's this encouragement um, uh, with that in mind, with this struggle to get along and this conflict brewing. Um, the writer of Hebrews says this, Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one We'll see the Lord. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God, that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. There's this encouragement to live in harmony even in the midst of their struggle to get along. This is Jesus' team. This is Jesus' uh, Justice League. This is Jesus' Fantastic Four, but a bigger group. This is Jesus' team. They're a diverse and they were, they were ordinary people and they were on mission and they struggled to get along. But just think of all the things that were accomplished because of his team. Think of where we are today. Think of the things that the church has done and accomplished because of this group of believers. They did tremendous, extraordinary things. Here's the deal. I don't know if you know this or not. But we live in a time where the world is in desperate need of people to be a part of God's mission. You don't have to look very far to see craziness in our world. You don't have to look very far to see disunity and hatred and and tension and conflict and, and lack of peace. You don't have to look very far outside of your bubble some of you maybe not even have to look outside of your bubble but to see that our world is in desperate need of people who are willing to be on God's mission to bring about peace and wholeness and redemption and salvation God is looking for people to be on his team can I encourage you and can I challenge you that you are in prime position to be on that team. You are in a prime spot to join God's mission, God's life-saving mission, to join in and to make a difference in our world. But can I encourage you a step further? Do it together. Do it together. If you try to go about and do this on your own, you may be successful to an extent, and you may do some really awesome things, but I promise you there will come a time where you'll hit a wall and you just won't be able to keep going anymore. Do it together. Do it together. Do it in a group that is diverse, a group of ordinary people who are committed to the mission of Jesus Christ to bring about that redemption.
we are, we have a system that gives you a built-in team. Everybody do me a favor. Look around you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Look. Move your head. Move your eyes. Look around you. All the way around you. Not just one way, but look all the way around you. You have a system that is built in, that is designed to give you a team to be on mission together. It is what our youth group should be about. That you have teammates that you get to be on mission with. But the truth is, sometimes things rear their rear its ugly head. Sometimes there is conflict, even within sometimes there is um, sometimes there is division, even in a youth group. Sometimes there is feelings of of bitterness and anger within a youth group, can I encourage you to be a youth group that lives in harmony with each other? To be a youth group where when conflict arises and struggles to get along arise, that we address them and that we understand that we are on the same team. That we are on mission together and these are our teammates on Jesus' mission. Be in harmony with each other. Can I also encourage you to be together? To be together. We cannot be a team when we are not together. And so as we move forward, and, and we don't know what youth group will continue to look like in COVID or events or things like that, but as much as possible... Can I encourage you to be together? You cannot be part of a team when you are not together. So be here. Be here as much as you can be here with your teammates. Let me challenge you to go one step further. Let me challenge you in your being on mission, on God's team, on Jesus' life-saving mission. Can I challenge you? On behalf of myself and my fellow old people, can I challenge you to be better than the example that that is sometimes set for you? Because the truth is, at times we have failed to set for you an example of what it looks like to be together on the same team, to be on mission together. We have failed. And so can I challenge you to be better than the examples that have been set for you. To take seriously the call to be on mission together. And I challenge you to be a youth group of world changers. To be a youth group that takes seriously the call of Jesus to make disciples, to bring about justice, to bring about healing and to bring about wholeness and to bring about redemption, can I challenge you to be that youth group? I was going to go a different direction, but I think that that's good. I think I'm just going to end it right there. Are you willing to be that youth group? Are you willing to take seriously the call of Christ? To be on mission. The the life-saving mission. Here's where we're going to close. I'm just going to take 60 seconds. 60 to 90 seconds. And we're going to be quiet. And I'm just going to ask you to reflect. What does that look like in your life? What does it look like to be on mission with Jesus? But also to be on mission with those around you in this youth group. Take a minute. God, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for being a God who seeks to bring about wholeness and peace and redemption and salvation. And thank you for doing that in our lives. 
God, it is my prayer and my desire that we can be a youth group that is together in harmony, joining your mission. Thank you for the privilege that we have to be able to join together in your work. That you don't just do it from where you are and, 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 and we're all hands off, but that you invite us to play a part in that. And so help us to know what that looks like. To take that call seriously. God, it's my prayer that my friends here and the next generation would be the example of what it looks like to be on mission together for you. Thank you again for your love. Help us to love you more and to love each other more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.